What's going on guys? This is the build of the Takushi TL12 V2 3D printed model that I've designed. Um, I'm gonna say that I started gluing these parts. So I started with the cab, uh, sanded it down a little bit just to get it a little bit smooth. Um, I put a little bit of body filler in here and sand it some more after I'm done, but essentially it's all super glue. I use Gorilla Glue, Super Gel. You can use any kind of super glue uh, as long as the parts are nice and clean. And then what you'll do is if you want it to glue real quick, you'll use this activator or an accelerator. And this one's called HPD uh, High Performance distributors I guess but uh, what they do is it's insta set in this works really well on getting the super glue to adhere within like five seconds and it's bonded so I started by gluing the roof uh, when I print these parts I printed the roof with uh, this top piece facing down and then printed it up with the supports here this was printed one side down and the other side down with a support under this lip. Okay, so when you go and print them, make sure the smooth, nice side is facing down because there is this notch here, right? And this is supposed to fit inside the main body. Now, I haven't sanded this yet, but eventually it will be. When you are 3D printing this, no supports except for the bottom. Alright, this is the only place you'll need supports everywhere else. Leave it open because you want uh, the holes to be open like this. You'll notice on the left side there's a much bigger hole than the other side for the motor. That's because the space in here is just big enough to fit the two motors with a small little gap in between. And you still need to fit the drive shaft through so this way you fit the drive shaft in there and you won't see it once the tracks and the sprocket are in so that's just that uh, and then yeah we'll start working on getting this put together again make sure you have a nice smooth base to 3d print on and get this guy going so we'll put him aside we're gonna glue this okay so the next couple pieces that are gonna get glued are the front door opening and that's gonna go in like this okay you're gonna glue it and then also on the back here is this back plate and this goes right inside here just inside like that and you will glue that as well okay this will be the next piece after the front is on so once this goes in and it's in place okay make sure it's nice and flush and when you're gluing, I know you're going to say, well, how do I make sure it's super flush? Well, you might get a little bit of glue on your fingers, but there's a notch here and just inside, and that's where this rests against, and then this should be flush up here. And why do we want it flush? Because this guy, the light bar, is going to go up top. So this will go just a touch above, maybe a mil, millimeter, you know, like something like that. Okay, we want to have it flush with the bottom here. Make sure it's centered. Glue that guy in place. Again, once this is glued in, it should be all nice and flush. And then you'll have the top piece. This will be removable. And the reason why we want it to be removable is because once it goes in the body, you'll need to get access to the battery or to any of the components. This is the engine cover for the back. Okay, again, 3D print it like this, flat with support here and then we'll put mesh inside and this part goes like this all right there's some tabs here when you're printing this there is no supports this is on a 45 so it should be enough make sure your printer can do 45 uh, supports and then we'll put the mesh and the exhaust will be on this side here like that. And so this just goes on top. All right, next we're gonna do the seat. Uh, you'll be printing it facing down like this. So the stick will be down. You'll have supports over here, here. Uh, this will be flush and there's gonna be supports printed on the inside, but what can you do? But in any case, it'll look like that when you print it. When you get it and you're done, just give it a light 
sanding, and I mean really light, so then that way when you're done, they should be perfect. Okay, and you're going to glue this as well. This is going to be the seat for the driver, and this will slide right in here. And you'll have some ESCs sitting in front here of the motors. Okay. When you're done gluing, should look something like this. We'll see how that'll tie in. The seat will be much higher. Okay, so it'll actually be sitting, the seat will be flush with this front here. And now uh, we'll just add the light bar and we'll move on to the next section. For the roller or carrier assembly, there's a few parts that need to be printed. You're going to be printing this carrier first. This is what's going to hold the tracks, right? The front idler goes here, the middle idlers, and then the rear idler uh, or rollers, whatever you want to call them. So you'll print this like this, right? Table here, supports everywhere. Um, you want to have supports in here as well to make sure this opening is perfect because when you print this piece, this is what holds the front idler wheel, right? it needs to slide in. So when we put this in, you want to make sure that uh, the bottom uh, with the notch is facing down, okay? And then this slides in. Now, when it slides in, you'll see there's this piece here. This is to where the spring will go inside there. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to find a four millimeter rod and you're going to have to cut one to length that fits within here okay? because there's a hole in the back and that's for the uh, four millimeter shaft and it'll stop just shy of this and the spring is there to control the uh, tension. Now I will be adding extra little cylinders here in case this is not enough tension um, because you don't want to have track skipping so that's what that's for. Uh, we, I also include a solid shaft so that if you want to just keep it solid so it doesn't spring you can also do that instead of this but again you'll still need that four millimeter uh, rod to, to hold that in. So that's how that front piece is going to go. There's also this little pinhole here. You will want to line this up when you're trying to set the tension. Okay, I don't know if you can see it here, but you'll push the idler in and then put like a, a an Allen key in there, a small little one or something that you can hold this back so you can put the, the track on. You don't really need to. If you're good enough, you can do it without it. Uh, and then, again, remove all the supports, sand everything down. There's holes here to attach to the body, so you'll want to do that before you do the motor mounts for the body. As far as the sprockets go, the sprockets have a hole here for a set screw. And this is designed for the motor shaft that I'll give you the specs on. So basically, it's a 100 RPM motor. I believe this is a 6 millimeter shaft. So that'll go in, the set screw will tighten down. There's nothing here, this is just so I didn't have to print a whole solid piece. Um, but then you'll put the cap on here, glue it on, because it's the last time you'll need to ever do that. If you need to remove the, the sprocket, just go from the set screw, loosen it, and this comes right on and off. Check your tolerances when you're printing, because you may have to get in here with an X-Acto knife and just make sure that it goes on snug. Also, it's a good time to paint all these things before you go and attach them because there's different colors for each component. So the colors for the Takushi I've used is PS2 from Tamiya. One of these small cans will do. The TS4 is a German gray. And AS2 is for the outer wings. So I'll show you what each color goes to when it's time to paint. Uh, I won't actually show you the painting process but uh, I'll show you which color is associated to which part. All right, once you're done printing this arm, right, this is gonna be the boom. Uh, I printed it flat like that on the printer, okay? Uh, the track assemblies were printed like this as well, upside down, so that this part was open, 
and make sure you just put supports in here everywhere else these holes you don't want supports in them because it can be a pain to try to get those out same thing with here try not to get any supports in the holes um but yeah so once it's done you'll have this whole assembly i've attached this piece here just because i wanted some structural rigidity uh, because this will start wobbling on you because it's only tied in by this piece but uh three millimeter screws by 12 for this piece and then this is going to be a three millimeter hole so that you get your three millimeter pins now these pins are going to be i believe 12 millimeter long and they're going to go into the bucket assembly which looks like this okay so once that's in it's going to go inside there so again that's why we want it to go a little bit longer and they'll fit just inside now there's a bit of a gap here you can see the shimmy the reason i did that is because i wanted to reinforce the inside arm here because this is all plastic i wanted to add a little bit of strength so it doesn't break because on the one i printed for myself it broke right here right where this gray spot is you see that it just didn't print that great and same thing on this side. So it looks fine on the outside, but I feel by adding a little bit of a brass. So what I'll do is I'll epoxy these in and they'll go in just like this. And they're gonna get that gap. This is about 0.4 millimeters. So with both of them in there, that should snug it up. Okay, and then you'll have a nice smooth, you won't need to put washers in here. Again, if you don't want to do this part here, make sure you do 100% infill. Um, that'll help. Again, it's really dependent on how you're printing it. You could print it a little more vertical like this. You'll have more supports, but the way the printer will print is more in a different direction, which is going to give it uh, the strength vertically here versus horizontally, which I did. So if I printed this more like that, possibly, uh, sorry, like this, it'll even more like that. It'll do lines like this, which will give it more strength vertically through this piece. Uh, other than that, yeah, there's this little bracket here for the uh, servo wire that's going to run from inside here. And I'll show you how to do the servo in a minute. But if you can, get some brass and get some tin snips, cut it, sand it and then epoxy that in there. Uh, the bucket itself, again, print it flat like that. This piece, this back support piece will be printed flat like that. Uh, make sure that you, you can put supports in here. Again, this is gonna be for the 20 kilogram servo with the servo horn that's shaped like this. It fits perfectly in there, nice and snug. You don't even need the screws. Um, if anything, probably I'd cut this halfway uh, so that at least some of the servo horn is in here and it's held because this kind of looks odd with all this here. Uh, but to make it look more realistic, you would just chop it off under the holes here. And also same thing with the servo horn. And then that way it'll turn because once it's inside here, it's stuck. Um, it's in position. It won't go anywhere. There's nowhere for it to go. So yeah, the bucket uh, had supports on the inside here. Uh, you can minimize that by putting like a block so that there's only two pieces of support so that you can later break them out. But this thing came out nice and smooth. There's a little bit of support here as well because of the angle. So that's the bucket and the attachment for it. So it looks like that. And as you can see, once everything starts to go together, you'll start to get a skid steer. Uh, the wings are what we're gonna look at next. All right, next up on the board is the wings for the skid steer. Now, when you print these, you'll print them like that. You'll have supports under here, supports under there. You'll also have a support from here and one from underneath here, this piece and in between here. When you are removing the supports, be very careful. Make sure your support density is really low, like, you know, 15, 20%. It's for supports. For infill, you want to have 100% infill or 90, 80, whatever. There's just not much chance that it'll have any infill at all. What I would suggest is for anything that you're making here, uh, 
make sure the line width is three or four lines thick for the outside walls. And what that does is it removes a lot of the, the infill and creates more strength. So like this is a solid piece. If there was infill, it'd be a little bit squishier depending on how the density is. Uh, but yeah, this piece will now go here and the other one will go on the other side. Now the differences between the two is one comes with hinges one side will have hinges, okay? And when you're printing it, there'll be supports under here. You wanna drill those holes clean so that they support the two millimeter uh, rods. And then this one will have a hole here for a magnet. And you're gonna glue in a magnet, okay? Uh, on the back here, just get a piece of scrap uh, and put it behind here so that the magnet has something uh, to lean up against. So scrap plastic from when you're printing from your supports. Just cut a piece, put it in there. Make sure you clean out all the supports really well. Uh, and then we'll start assembling this. This takes uh, two millimeters and two millimeters uh, set screws. And they'll be, I believe, 10 or eight millimeters long. Go through and then put a, a lock nut on the other side. Now, keep in mind, before you assemble everything, you're going to want to put the motors in first, or sorry, last. So anything that's in the way, so these two set screws here for the tracks, uh, these two here should be okay. Um, and these ones up here, you're probably going to want to put the set screws in. That's for this piece here. Okay. So it sits like that and it's flush. Now, when you're doing this, another tip, super glue, everything here. If you're not looking to take this apart, super glue it, put it in place, put the screws in. That way you're going to have extra strength of holding. Um, and that'll be that step there. Before we go to paint, because we're going to paint everything first, then we're going to assemble it, the rear door. All right. This one's nice and smooth because I printed it with supports to raise it up so that it was proper because this thing is on an angle. What I should have done was put it flat and then sanded this smooth uh, just so that it'd be easier because now I got to go and redrill this hole for the other magnet for the door when it closes. Uh, another thing some people may be wondering um, for the door, this is where the hinges go. Okay, so you drop that pin in there, two millimeter pin on one side and then the other. I suggest putting, again, something to stop it from falling out the bottom. Um, the other big thing with this is decals. Eventually you're gonna wanna put decals. Uh, I can leave the link for the files to print. You just need your own printer. And um, for the logos, like the Takushi, that was all done on a Cricut uh, because if I print on white paper, it's going to print the whole thing and it's going to look weird. So if you have a Cricut, you can put Takushi there. Uh, and then the lights are just red uh, print paper. So that was easy. But for any of the other decals, I did use a Cricut. And that's how I got them on there. Uh, so let's go over paint schemes. I've broken it down into the three different groups. The light color, the AS2, is going to be the wings. As you can see in the one that I've got already. Uh, the wings are painted the light color. Uh, the oh, That's the only thing that has that color. Okay. Now, again, what I mentioned, the decals, this is done on my Cricut. So I printed it out. That's why they look like that. But for your rear, like the... Let me get this to zoom properly here. For the signals here or any of the markings, and any of the warning stickers, those are all done on a regular printer with a gloss... Uh, photo paper, and then cut. All right, the bucket is black, uh, but everything else here in the middle that's here is this dark gray, which is TS4. So it'll be the cab, the rear, the door, uh, the body, the, the main uh, parts here. Also the sprockets, any of the running gear, uh, that'll be all dark gray. Also this part here for the bucket, the attachment piece, that is also painted the dark gray uh, and the exhaust is going to be black as well i forgot to mention that the other thing is the red parts so ps2 will be anything that's related to the boom so the cross member here the boom itself these two arms 
that are in the back here. Okay, those ones as well. The other thing I forgot to mention is um, these little arms. They go in here inside the the wings. They're this dark gray too. And that's it. Everything else is going to be uh, hidden or doesn't require any paint. That's like, for example, you can do the interior here black. Uh, and then there's a battery tray that's also in there that you can just leave unpainted. With the one I've got here, I've got mesh. Now this mesh I got from the dollar store. Basically, it's uh, from those strainers. Um, just cut it out, put it in. The other thing here is the battery tray goes inside. That's about it. I'll talk to you about all the different screws and pins. I'll list all the components that you need to have to put this together. So there's going to be a bunch of M3, M2 um, screws. And then there's going to be an M4 uh, for the pins. All right. So these are an M4 pin for the cylinders. Uh, this is an M3. Uh, up here it's an M3. These are M2s. Uh, this one I believe is an M3. The This is also part of the motor. But yeah, anything that's attached will do that. These bars here, again, once you print them, you can see where they're located. Just super glue them in place. Same thing with the grab handles there. All super glued. And that's about it. This part here is painted yellow. It's the, the locking mechanism when it's up, but because it's electric, it'll never fall down. These pins here, three mil. Make sure these are nice and tight. Uh, also, another thing with mine, this one's uh, been cracking, um, but I think it's because I did something while testing and it broke. Uh, the rear plexiglass here, you can buy some plexiglass on Amazon. Most of the parts I bought were from Amazon if you're looking to get them. Uh, same thing with the step here. Servo, I have a 25 kilogram, but I think it's overkill. Um, you can do a 20 and it'll work just as well. And that's it. So we can start assembling or painting, then assembly. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna do the mesh. Um, this is from the dollar store. It's one of those, whatever, mesh thingy. They have a handle here. I guess it's to cover your pot when you're cooking. <clears throat> I don't use it for cooking i use it for making grills because it's fine enough mesh so what we're going to do is we're going to measure out rough estimate of what we need and then we'll trim it once we're there so i'm just going to put some lines here just to define the overall size so i know how much i need and that's what we're going to cut out and then we'll adjust it now I'm using just a regular pair of scissors because it cuts just as good as if you were to use anything else. Yes, I am left-handed. That's why I'm cutting with right-handed scissors because us left-handed people just there aren't too many of us in the world. There we go. So now that we have this, it's still big, but what we're going to do now is we're going to trace these openings so we know exactly how far to uh, cut the mesh because we don't want it everywhere. We just want it inside here and not too close to the edges because that's going to rest on the wall, uh, the outside walls. <clears throat> so let's start marking this off and trim it again. For this part, you want to put the mesh on the inside. And we're going to mark off how far we want it in. So I want to bring this in just enough to cover the holes. And then on the opposite side, I will mark right to the edge. Go around this notch. Now you can create two notches on yours, one for this side. You can just cut out this piece here. And then you can put your other servo for like auxiliary if you're looking to do that. Uh, this one here. Oh go just inside so we'll cut it a little bit longer and then trim it after it's so essentially now we want to cut this and we'll just shorten it up a little bit you can keep the whole piece inside just want to make sure it's shy of the edges there and yeah 
just like that. All right, so we got a general idea. We're going to trim this off a little bit more. Again, it's going to come right to the edge here. So we got to make sure that one's nice and straight. And just like that, it's all trimmed out. Now, to secure this, we're going to put some dabs of super glue and let it dry and it'll cure. You can also put a clamp on top. I have some spray. The stuff it's supposed to set it pretty much right away uh this is bad stuff for your skin and to breathe in it even says it can cause cancer it's up to you i uh use it very sparingly but uh in this case we're just going to put it here and it should set um this is actually not too bad just put a clamp on it and it should set and that's what it's going to look like when it's done we still have to glue on the top piece here and then spray everything but before you glue it, make sure you paint it and then put this on because then you can have the mesh stick through.